Season 15, Episode 7. Last time on Races to Places, I arrived at Detifoss Falls. This episode's fun fact about Iceland. Icelanders love ice cream, and go as far to say heading for an ice cream can be the perfect first date. Stormy weather doesn't even deter them from queuing up at the best shops in Iceland. Funny, myself and Norman have already had a few dates to the ice cream shop since we arrived. <laughs> This is the largest waterfall by volume in Iceland and the second largest in Europe behind the Rhine Falls. Wow, this is a fantastic spot to check the waterfall out. You can see the full height of it, about 45 metres. It's about 100 metres wide and there's so much volume of water going over. I had to come away to this point to make this video because over there, there's no chance you'd have been able to hear me speak. really spectacular the way that this has carved its way through the canyon it's almost like the earth has just split open really spectacular and hopefully from the drone footage you can see the size of this canyon and the waterfall and the waterfalls that lead up to it spectacular This reminds me so much of riding in Mount Bromo, in the Bromo complex in Indonesia. Uh, the scenery is very similar, uh, very volcanic, the mist on the high peaks and just green pastures in the distance, but then this awesome correlation of volcanic ash just merging from one mound to the other. Look at the low cloud over there. The mist in the valley, a little bit of snow still remaining. And then here we've got, there's the track going all the way into the distance. A little bit of vegetation growing. And then here, the mist on the top of the mountain. <laughs> Just like Indonesia. Well, this is, to all intents and purposes, the end of the world. The end of the world as far as Iceland is concerned. This is a very north-eastern corner, northeastern tip of Iceland. Not much going on here. So here we are tonight. Um quite literally at the end of Iceland. Um, still a little bit bunged up, um, but this is 
the cliff end of the far north east corner of Iceland. Uh, it's as far as you can go. Um, there is a huge lighthouse here and me and my tent. So if I just walk forward, I'll show you. I've got the bike there and three of us, <laughs> the lighthouse, the bike and me. Gonna cook up some nice food tonight. I've been shopping, so not like last night where it was a massive letdown with plain pasta. And you'll be surprised, it's not tuna. It is pasta, but it's not tuna. Got me, got myself some, uh, I can't remember what it is now, but I'll tell you when I get it out. It's very good and it's a massive tin, so I'm definitely not gonna go hungry. Soggy, soggy feet all day after having a little bit too heavier. Oh, dab in a river. What have we here, Mr. Poskett? We might have some cheese and garlic Hunt's pasta sauce tonight. Wow, somebody's prepared and guess what guys, it's not tuna. And we've even still got a bit of food from last time I used this tin opener on my leather one wave, which was probably quite some years ago. That's quite a lot of sauce for such little spaghetti, but it's more like a soup, but I think it's gonna be grand. Well, the comfiest seat in the house to eat it is obviously my Northern 901 seat, but after sitting on it all day, I decided to sit in here out of the wind to enjoy my cheese and garlic pasta delight. Definitely going to be a nice view to wake up to here. So when I'm in new places, I always uh, like to try different foods, uh, different chocolate bars, different sweets, all kinds of different things. I saw these in the supermarket yesterday. Anybody that calls their sweet a crazy caramel frog that looks nothing at all like a frog. Oh, it is a frog. Trying new things in new places. Cheers. Today I'm going to be heading for Scala. Scala is set on the 40 km long peninsula stretching into the ocean from Iceland's northeast corner. Habitation in Skalar dates back to an early settlement. Residents based their livelihood on utilising the land for sheep farming as well as an abundant fishing grounds just offshore. These fishing grounds were also frequented by foreign fishing vessels and some trade was conducted by rowboats. In the last decades of the 19th century, Faroe Islanders Fishing off Langanes started seeking facilities on land to process their catch. They would fish herring for bait, but had problems storing it. This led to a profitable business for farmers, as they would harvest ice during the winter, store it in dug turf houses, then sell it to the fisheries during the summer months. Hey guys, here we are. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, I've not had breakfast yet. But, I got put onto something by and an Icelandic local and, uh, and that's this and you Icelanders know what it is but it basically looks like a haggis okay but it's like I can't even read it so I try and pronounce what it's called but it's 
Lifrapilza. Lifrapilza. Lifrapilza? Sodding. I presume sodding is liver, but I have no idea. The good thing is that I eat anything, and when I'm hungry, even more so. So, here I am. I'm going to try it. And apparently, it's full of goodness, and it fills you up really quick, and you can just eat it straight out of the packet. It looks a bit like a haggis, like something you would get in uh, in Scottish Highlands, but I'm not sure if you have to... Oh yeah, there's like a little skin on it. Like a little skin, you can just peel that off, look. Da da da! Like that. And then... Once you've peeled the jelly skin back... Da da da! Okay. Let's see what it tastes like. Hmm. Kind of dry. A little bit like sausage meat. But I'll just call it the Icelandic liver sausage. Hmm. <laughs> With the Scalar visit completed, I'm now going to make my way south where Norman and myself will be inspecting one of Iceland's top five glaciers, Vatnajökull. Again, pronunciation probably not perfect here. <laughs> That was a nice climb. Nice view. Okay, here we are in a beautiful setting on the east coast of Iceland. And I wanted to take the opportunity at some point in this trip to talk about the luggage that I'm using on this bike on this trip and why. So I'm just going to spend some time going through that. First of all, it's not much different to what I used on my world trip races to places when I was with Basel Bike. Uh, so I've chose to use the same uh, frame mounted pannier system, the Monsoon Evos on the back of the bike and the main reason for that is because I can put the majority of my luggage in there and keep the weight low down. So that's the main reason for using these bags. It, it puts the biggest volume as low down as possible. Um, both of them are the small size. I find that they're more than big enough in small size, but those that are traveling maybe two up or want more capacity, there is a larger one. And then on each side, I have on the front of each bag I have a large fender bag and on the rear of each bag I have a can holster and a bottle holder uh, on each bag. So that means that I can keep my bottles and cans on the outside of my bags with liquids and fluids in uh, and I also have some space on the front. So for example on the left hand side I have oil, spare oil for the bike, not so much because the bike uses oil but just in case I drop the bike in a river, I can get the water out and put some fresh oil in to get me to the next town, or if I need to put some oil in, I can do. In the right hand side on the front pouch, I've got my tool kit. Now I used to have the tool kit on the nav tower on Basel bike, but on this bike I don't have the space up there, so I've got my tool kit there. They're a lot less tightly packed than they had on Races to Places because I've got less stuff. Uh, on the back of the bags I've got chain lube in one of the bottle holsters and in the other side in the can holder I've got petrol can for my cooker and then the other two 
bags are really just spare. This one I just use as a rubbish bag, so I've got a food tin in there and a load of other stuff I just put in there. And then when I see a rubbish bin, I can just throw it away. So that's the main bags on the fame, fame mounted system. They rolled all the way down because there's not as much as I normally have in them. Uh, on top here, we've got a Tornado 2M. So this is a medium sized one. On races to places, I had the large one and it's because I've got a lot less clothes this time. I've also got a lot less spare parts. So when I traveled around the world, I was remote for days and there was no chance to get spare parts. Here in Iceland, um, you're literally a day's ride from Reykjavik and there's a KTM dealer there, you can order parts in. Um, so you're not, you're not far away from finding what you need. The only spare thing that I've got with me for the bike is an air filter in case I drown the bike in the river. So, and then in my top bag, because I'm only traveling for a month here in Iceland, I've just got a pair of trainers, a pair of jeans, four, four t-shirts and some pants and socks. Like I really don't have a lot and that's all in here, my wash kit and everything. Uh, I've got the same tank bag, Enduristan uh, 4H tank bag that I used on Races to Places, but it's a lot less full than it was on Races to Places. Uh, I'm only using my iPhone 2 and 2 GoPros to film here in Iceland, uh, my drone as well. But where I had my drone in my tank bag on Races to Places, I've got it in one of my side bags here. Uh, so I've got a bit of space in here to put stuff as the daily stuff as you go along you buy stuff you can throw it in your tank bag so I love this tank bag it's really soft it doesn't interfere with when I'm, when I'm riding and that's what I'm using this time same as before and then the last thing is this the Enduristan Hurricane 25 bag the main reason for using the 25 is I carry a 15 inch MacBook Pro laptop uh, that goes in here this is waterproof this backpack uh, literally all I've got in here is my valuables, so I've got my passport, my laptop, uh, and that's about it, just nothing much else in here, it's just a bit of spare space. Uh, the reason that I like to carry the backpack more than anything is because it keeps my laptop with me obviously, but it's also got a bladder which is on the outside which I carry with water, so I've got a drink here, so whenever I'm riding I can drink water. So, that's it. Hurricane 25 backpack, Enduristan 4H tank bag, medium tornado pack sack on the back and not very full at all. It's really empty, you can see how flat it is. And that helps to keep the weight down as well. Two small Enduristan Evos, two large fender bags on the front of each side and then bottle holder and can holder on the back. So. Very, very similar setup to what I did when I traveled around the world. And so far it's really good and it's working great. Next time on Races to Places, we'll be visiting the southeast corner of Iceland and I visit the country's largest ice cap.